Zach Wheeler finished second in Cy Young voting last year with a 2.78 ERA and nearly 50 more innings than the first place finisher Corbin Burns. And to the untrained eye, his approach to hitters might seem relatively simple. There's between an 80 and 90% chance that you're getting one of three pitches when you face him, and two of those pitches are fastballs. It's either going to be a four-seamer, a sinker, or a slider. But nestled within that slider is actually two separate pitches. If you're a right-handed hitter, the shape you're more than likely going to get is kind of a tight slider shape. This pitch has maybe two to five inches of horizontal movement, a little bit of that cut action that you normally see on sliders. It's not really thrown particularly hard, um, and it doesn't really have too much of that rise or that care that you see in some of the sweepers that run across the zone. Think of Jake DeGrom when trying to envision this pitch shape. And if you're a left-handed hitter, what you're more than likely going to get is more of a cutterish pitch. This pitch has some of that rise, some of that hop, and virtually no horizontal movement at all. I think of a Joe Musgrove or a Madison Bumgarner when we're trying to envision what this pitch would look like. So what gives? Why alter the pitch's shape based on the handedness of the hitter? Let's dig into why Zach Wheeler's slider is a chameleon. Let's first lay out the difference between Wheeler's two sliders. That tight slider shape, the DeGrom style one, that Wheeler throws to right-handed hitters averaged about four inches of vertical movement and four inches of horizontal movement at 90 miles per hour last year. His slider shape to left-handed hitters had seven inches of vertical movement and one inch of horizontal movement at 92 miles per hour last year. Now, it kind of doesn't really make intuitive sense that Zach Wheeler's slider would only be moving as much as I say it's moving, given that you might be watching it and thinking it's moving a heck of a lot more than that. But in essence, this is short form movement. This is kind of the language that's spoken between players and coaches to communicate and talk universally about pitch shapes in a consistent way. And I think the key to understanding it is starting with football spin, also known as bullet spin, also known as our gyro slider in baseball. It's simply a pitch that's thrown and spun like this, like simply how you roll your fingers off a of football, such that on the trajectory to its target, the only force being applied to that ball is the force of gravity pushing it downward. So at the plate, for example, when this is being thrown like that, this would end up here, and it would have zero inches of horizontal movement and zero inches of vertical movement. And every pitch in baseball can be charted, so to speak, relative to this football spin or, or gyro slider. If you're getting positive vertical movement, what you're doing is you're applying some backspin to the pitch, such that at the plate, this pitch would end up higher than our bullet spun slider. If you're applying top spin like you would on a curveball, you get negative vertical movement. That means that the pitch would end up below that bullet spun slider at the plate. So if you think about how Zach Lear would get from a pitch that's four inches of vertical movement, four inches of horizontal movement, to his lefty slider, which is seven inches of vertical movement and only one inch of horizontal movement, you have to think about the conversion of those numbers. So four inches to seven inches on the vertical movement side would mean that he's adding more backspin, such that he's going from zero inches the bullet spun slider, four inches, his righty slider, seven inches. So he's applying more backspin to the pitch. And to apply the more backspin, what he's doing is he's taking away some of the side spin that got him to four inches, such that it's now down to one. Now let's talk about the why. Why does Wheeler do this? We'll first go to the man himself for an explanation, and shout out to the GOAT here, Pitching Ninja, for asking Wheeler about this topic at last year's All-Star Game and getting us all this answer. My slider started off as a, as a cutter back in high A. And so I've always kind of had a feel for a cutter. So I've been throwing a cutter a lot more this year. And, you know, sometimes I only throw three to five sliders a game, true sliders. A lot of them are just cutters. Sometimes I hold on to the cutter for too long and it does act like a slider down and in to a lefty. But, you know, most of the time I'm trying to go up and into a lefty or back door to a lefty, it's a, it's a cutter. But I do think there's another reason nestled within here that uh, kind of gives us a theory as to the why. Why would a pitcher, a right-handed pitcher, alter the safety of the slider at all or prefer to throw more of a cuttery pitch versus a left-handed hitter than a right-handed hitter? And the theory is that it kind of relates back to the steepness of a hitter's swing and how lefties swing and how steep lefties can kind of allow themselves more margin for error on a slider such that if they're fooled a little bit, they're able to stay inside the ball a little bit better and make better contact, have a better chance of creating damage on that pitch. And I'll admit, I, I asked some major and minor league coaches about this idea of why a right-handed pitcher would want to go more towards a cutter shape than a true lateral slider shape versus lefties. And that was kind of the response I got. There's a lot of people who kind of agreed with that idea anecdotally. Um, and it's an interesting one, but I have to admit it's one that I'm still kind of wrapping my head around. I'm still trying to understand it. So this next section here kind of relates, uh, it's kind of a, a test for me to try out the idea and try to talk through it. So I hope I do my best to explain. 
The idea is that when you have a more vertical bat angle, a hitter like Brandon Belt or Freddie Freeman are probably the extremes of this, the natural direction of their swing allows them to stay inside a sweeping slider longer. So if they're fooled or off of the trajectory of an incoming righty slider, and that pitch keeps traveling towards them with a little bit of that sweep, the chance they'd be able to do damage on a ball is higher because of how their more vertical bat angle, the steepness of their swing, tracks through the zone. It allows them to stay inside the pitch longer. But when you have a flatter swing, what tends to happen when you're off is that the margin for error against a standard sweepy slider shrinks, and you kind of just pop that ball into the ground or foul it off if you're not spot on. To envision this, compare the swings of a Francisco Lindor or Lamont Wade Jr. to a Belter or Freeman, and you can see that contrast in bat angle, especially when I'm using a common pitch location so that the element of a hitter's adjustability isn't skewing how steep their bat is through the zone. A hitter like a belter or freeman against a standard slider will naturally follow the movement of that pitch, that sweepy slider, and stay inside it. Whereas a flatter swing of a Lindor or a Wade Jr. won't do that and have a tendency to top the ball into the ground. So to attack a hitter like a Brandon Belt or a Freddie Freeman, Zach Wither has reason to go against his standard righty slider shape. That slider that has a little bit more of that sweeping and cutting action as it goes across the zone and push for more of that backspin. And the reason behind that is that that backspin limits the ability of hitters with steeper swing planes to stay inside the ball longer, giving them that hot margin for error. Instead, it takes that away because that pitch will generally eat them up a little bit more. The way their swing tracks isn't able to stay inside a ball that has less of that horizontal movement and more of that vertical movement. And you contrast that with a, a hitter who has more of a flat swing plane, like the Lindors and Lamont Wades we talked about. Uh, the key there is that those swings actually do stay inside those pitches. They have the ability to stay inside those kind of uh, high vertical movement, low glove side movement sliders, the lefty slider that Wheeler's throwing, because their swing tracks with that and is able to stay inside and create, again, the chance for more damage. So you can see here that we're breaking this down in a variety of ways. First, we look at it from the totality of a slider perspective. Wheeler throws one slider. Then we drill in more and see that Wheeler actually throws two slider shapes. And then we drill into another really low level theory based thing that maybe he only prefers these certain shapes based on the vertical bat angle of the hitter which is a really fascinating topic that I hope at some point in the future we get a lot more information on. There are always so many more layers than the one on the surface in baseball, especially on the pitching side of things that you can dig into to kind of create some cool theories and think about some things in a different way and help people maybe appreciate and understand the game a little bit better. And I think that I'd love some more data on the public side to help us kind of categorize hitters into different ways. Um, these steeper bat angle guys, these shallower kind of flatter bat angle guys, and help us kind of maybe bucket them together and start to understand exactly what kind of pitches objectively that they're able to attack better. And I think we we'll just educate us a ton on the hitter analysis side of things. I think right now we're limited to a lot of things like swing and take and hard contact, whereas we don't really get into too much of how the hitter moves, in part because it's so reactionary to where the pitcher ends up putting the ball. Um, that's a difficulty of it. I think it'll always be a difficulty of it. But I do think there's an opportunity in the next couple of years for these advancements to come through, especially with the Hawkeye implementation in major league ballparks that kind of give us these markerless motion capture points on everything. I imagine, I believe at least that major league teams are able to calculate something like a vertical bat angle. And I'm really curious, I hope at some point we kind of start to figure out and understand exactly what I'm talking about here. Maybe they've already bucketed guys and have this understanding. It's just that we in the public side kind of don't. So for now, at least we have the understanding that Zach Wheeler alters his cover shape based on the handedness of hitter he is facing. Right-handed hitters are getting more of that tight slider shape with a little bit of sweep. Left-handed hitters are getting more of that cutter style pitch. Um, and we'll have to wait for the public side to hopefully uh, get some data to help us understand more than anecdotally how hitters swing.